Brandon Breyer. Gotta love the reference to superhero name alliteration. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2019 superhero horror film, Brightburn. It stars Jackson A. Dunn, Elizabeth Banks, David Denman, Meredith Hagner, and Matt Jones, and was directed by David Yarovetsky. Brightburn tells the story of 12-year-old Brandon Breyer, who crash-landed on Earth as a baby, but was adopted and raised as a human. After he hits puberty, he begins to discover that he has superpowers and decides to use them to wreak havoc on all those who have wronged him. While it's easy and fitting to describe Brightburn as Superman meets the Omen, this movie never quite fully dives into the superhero horror genre that was pushed by its marketing. There are certainly references and allusions to superheroes, most prominently Superman, but this is definitely more of a horror movie than a dark superhero tale. Which isn't a bad thing, but I went into it expecting a little bit more emphasis on the superhero aspect and maybe a touch of satire given the explosion of superhero movies lately. But this is a horror movie, and it really has that mid-2000s horror flick feel. That might be an instant deal breaker for some people, but I actually found it to be oddly endearing. The early to mid 2000s were when I really started to get into film and started going to the movies all the time. It's also when I really started to get into horror, so movies from that time period are sort of horror comfort food for me. And so getting that vibe and seeing that style and those tropes again was something I actually really enjoyed about Brightburn. Like many horror films from the mid-2000s, Brightburn walks the thin line between effective scares and unintentional humor. I can see how some people will find certain parts of this movie silly or just plain stupid, but I personally think it actually worked. His powers, like the heat vision and levitation, do come across kind of silly at first, but as the action starts to pick up, I thought they added just the right amount of menace to Brandon's character. Same thing with his costume. The first time you see him with his whole getup, it's kind of laughable, but it does end up taking on this kind of ominous creepiness, especially at night with his glowing eyes. I also thought it was really fitting for the character, because he's a 12-year-old kid, and it's handmade. It actually reminded me a bit of Peter Parker's very first Spider-Man costume from Raimi's movie. I also really liked the moments of humor in this movie. It never goes so far that they're making light of the horrific stuff, but it is present. The comedy isn't in the form of funny one-liners, but rather in dialogue that feels natural. It's the kind of stuff that somebody would actually say if they were ever in such a crazy situation. Uncle Noah had some of the best moments of this with his reaction in the closet and then his nope, mm -mm, moment in the truck, but Brandon's father also had some funny dialogue during his arguments with his wife. I mean, if you really had found your baby in a spaceship in the woods, how would you ever begin to explain that to people 12 years later? The events and situation are crazy, but it's all set in the real world where stuff like this isn't normal. But just like horror movies of the 2000s, Brightburn does have some issues. There are some moments of gore which are fine, but the effects aren't the greatest. And there are also a few odd stylistic choices in the movie, like an overabundance of rack focuses in the first five minutes, and a really strange moment involving a lot of fade-ins and fade-outs that felt far better suited for a trailer than for the actual movie. The story's a little clunky at times, and a couple characters make the expected stupid horror movie decisions, but the thing that stuck out to me the most was the overuse of a particular horror movie trope. There are so many moments where a character will see Brandon, usually levitating with his glowing eyes, then they'll look away for a second, look back, and he's gone. And I actually lost count of how many times that happened. And it started to make me laugh because it's such a horror movie cliche and they did it so many times. Despite its issues, I had a good time with Brightburn. Whether intentional or not, I really appreciated the throwback to 2000s horror, tropes and all. The movie had a really interesting premise, some good buildup, and a solid execution. 
I would have loved a little bit more explanation for Brandon's backstory, and it would have been nice to see the superhero villain aspects played up a bit more, but I really enjoyed this movie and definitely wouldn't mind seeing more superhero horror in this same vein. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the premise. With the superhero craze of the last 20 years or so, it's kind of amazing to me that we haven't gotten a movie like this before. Sure, we've had anti-hero movies like Constantine, Hellboy, and even Ghost Rider that have tinges of these horror elements, but we've never had a movie that explores what would happen if a superhero used their powers for evil. The DCEU recently touched on the idea with Superman's trial in Batman vs Superman, but we've certainly never seen it actually play out like this. Although never explicitly mentioned, the parallel is clear. This movie is a Superman reimagining, only this time Clark Kent is fully aware of his superiority to humans and uses his powers for destruction and domination. The second pro is the throwback to the mid-2000s horror style. Again, I'm sure a lot of people would put this in the cons instead, but I found it to be very comforting, in a twisted kind of way. I doubt they were even intending for this feel, but it came across as almost a love letter homage to those films and made for a nostalgic viewing of a movie I've never seen before. On the con side, my number one issue was the lack of explanation. Maybe issue isn't the best word for it. Missed opportunity? They give us just enough of Brandon's backstory to draw the parallel to Superman, but then introduce new elements like the voices he hears without giving any explanation or expanding on the lore. Was he intentionally sent here? Was his transformation age triggered or was some external signal sent to catalyze everything? So many questions, but no attempts at explanation. There was a brief mention near the beginning of a wasp species that acts as a brood parasite, laying their eggs in the nests of other species. They get the fitness benefit of having progeny, but another species does all the work to raise those offspring. It seemed like they were setting up a parallel for Brandon's origins, but it's literally never mentioned again. I like the idea of an alien brood parasite, but it's purely speculation on my part. Con number two was the abundance of dropped subplots. I kind of have a feeling that quite a bit of this movie was cut during editing, so a lot of the things set up in the first and second acts don't end up having any payoff or resolution. Brandon's interactions with Caitlin are a prime example of this. She's a pretty big component of the first act, and the final scene between her and Brandon implies something, but then just gets dropped. The same exact thing happened with Brandon's relationship with his aunt. Neither were a big deal for the movie, but it was something I noticed while thinking about it after the fact. Brightburn is only 90 minutes long, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get an extended cut or at least some deleted scenes on the Blu-ray that resolve some of the drop subplots. I'm gonna give Brightburn 3.5 out of 5 paws. It's far from perfect, but I had a really good time with this one. It brought me back to when I first started getting into horror and did so with an interesting story that I would love to see more of. I would recommend Brightburn to fans of mid-2000s horror. I know I've said it a dozen times now, but this movie really had that vibe and played out in a nostalgic way for me, cliches and all. Horror fans who like superhero movies will enjoy the references, but I don't think it'll be as well liked by superhero fans who aren't big into horror. Although it's been marketed as a superhero horror film, it's definitely more horror than hero. If you liked Brightburn, I would recommend that you check out Constantine and Hellboy for two horror-tinged anti-hero stories from the film era that inspired this movie. I would also recommend that you check out Slither, it's another horror movie from that same era and was the directorial debut of James Gunn, who was a producer for Brightburn. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Brightburn? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, Brightburn is basically an evil Superman story. So what other superhero would you like to see an evil reimagining of? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. 
And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it so you can see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.